students, in the last two sessions, we have been discussing a model question paper. Remember, in the when I started answering this model question paper, I was telling you that answering a few model question papers goes a long way in facing your ensuing CET examination. Uh, it, it is almost a quick revision of almost the entire syllabus of both first PC and second PC. Uh, yes, in the model question paper, we had answered 51 questions. Uh, other nine questions were remaining. Uh, in this session, first I will complete those nine questions and go to solving one more such model question paper. Okay? Now, question number 52 is uh, on your screen. Uh, read it. Which of the following solutions are isotonic with each other? 0 0.51, 0 0.15 mole of urea, 0 0.05 m CaCl2, 0 0.1 mole of MgSO4, 0 0.15 mole of glucose. You can take a pause on your device and think over and later on you can uh, observe our discussion on the same question. Look, you just recollect what are these isotonic solutions? Solutions having same osmotic pressure are called isotonic solutions. Osmotic pressure is a colligative it depends on the number of solute particles present in the solution. Solute particles may be molecules, they may be ions. So it depends upon the total number of molecules if the solute is in the form of molecules. Depends on the total number of ions if it is an electrolyte. Okay? Same the number of particles, same the osmotic. Here, first choice, urea is a non-electrolyte. It exists as molecules even in the solution. So, the number of solute particles, the concentration of solute particles remains 0.15 m only in urea solution. It will not change even in the solution. But calcium chloride is a salt. It undergoes ionization, giving how many particles? 1 calcium ion and 2 Cl minus ions, totally 3. So, from each molecule of calcium chloride, you are getting 3 ions. From 0 0.05, you get totally 0 0.15 molar concentration of particles. Concentration of ions is 0 0.15 in calcium chloride. How did you get it? You simply multiply the molarity by 3. Why by 3? Because each molecule of calcium chloride dissociates into 3 ions in solution. And look at the next option magnesium sulfate. It's also a salt. It splits into 2 ions in solution. Okay. So, each molecule splits into two. So, the concentration of the ions is 0 0.1 into 2 equals 0 0.20 m. Last one, in 0 0.15 molar glucose, glucose is a non-electrolyte. It won't dissociate into ions. This should be taken as 0 0.15 only. It should be multiplied by 1. It won't dissociate. So, 0 0.15 urea, 0 0.15 calcium chloride, 0 0.15 glucose. Uh, yes, solutions, options, solution 1, solution 2, and solution 4. 
have the same concentration of solute particles in the solution, these three are isoform. So the answer should be C. Solution 1, solution 2, and solution 4. Suppose this question, can it be asked like this? Which of the following has the highest osmotic pressure? Then the answer would have been magnesium sulfate because it has the highest concentration of solute particles in the solution. I hope you have understood this. We shall pass on to the next question. The question number 53 has appeared on the screen. Yes, read it. Two solutions A and B are separated by a semi permeable membrane. If the solvent flows from A to B, which of the following is true? A is more concentrated, both A and B have the same concentration. A is less concentrated than B, both A and B get diluted like that. Look. Uh, yes, we have two solutions. Solution A and solution B. When these two are connected by a semi permeable membrane, semi permeable membrane, the solvent flows from A to B. Semi-permeable membrane, etc. You must be knowing. Look, one thing you remember. During osmosis, recollect what is osmosis? Flow of solvent from solute so, uh, so from, from one solution to another. Only solvent flows from the dilute to concentrated solvent not from concentrated to dilute. That you must be very careful. Dilute to concentrated. So they have clearly said it is flowing from A to B. This is A, this is B. Solvent is flowing from A to B. From dilute solution to concentrated solution. So solution A should be dilute. B should be concentrated. A is value, B is concentrated. A is more concentrated wrong. Both A and B are having same concentration, that is also wrong. A is less concentrated than B. That is correct. Yes, what is the point to be remembered? Solvent always flows from dilute to concentrated solution during assembly. That was a simple question. Yes. Question number 54. Passivity of iron is due to the formation of a thin layer of. It's a very easy question. What is passivity? Uh, when an iron is exposed to uh, air or when iron is dipped in concentrated nitric acid, in fact, iron doesn't react with concentrated nitric acid. But concentrated nitric acid has no action on iron. There is no reaction between iron and concentrated nitric acid. But what happens is, when iron dipped in concentrated nitric acid is held near a magnet, the magnet cannot attract it. That means iron loses its natural property of being a magnetic material. So that is called passive iron. And the phenomenon is called passivity. Same thing happens with aluminium and chromium also. They also lose their normal natural properties when dipped in concentrated nitric acid. The reason is concentrated nitric acid oxidizes iron to ferric oxide, Fe2O3, which forms a hard film, hard layer all over the surface of iron. It is so hard, 
concentrated nitric acid cannot penetrate through this layer. Therefore, iron loses all its normal natural properties. So, passivity is mainly due to the formation of a thin layer of ferric oxide, Fe2O3, all over the surface of iron. Same thing happens in aluminium also. When aluminium is in concentrated nitric acid, there is no reaction between the two. In fact, aluminium dissolves in dilute HCl, but not in concentrated nitric acid. The reason is again same. Concentrated nitric acid oxidizes aluminium to aluminium oxide, Al2O3, which forms a hard film all over the surface, uh, protecting the interior metal from nitric acid. That is called passivity. So, option B was correct here. That is due to the formation of a film of ferric oxide. In aluminium it is Al2O3. In chromium it is Cr2O3. Like that. Question number 55. The electronic configurations of COF6 3 minus and COnH3 6 times 3 plus or respectively. E. This is a slightly thought provoking question. You must not hurry through. A little thinking is absolutely required here. One basic thing is F all halide ions, F minus, Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, they are weak ligands. That you must know. NH3, uh, EN, ethane 1, 2 diamine, cyanide ion, CN minus, and CO. If you don't know, better to make a note of these things. NH3, ethane 1, 2 diamine, CN minus, CO, carbon monoxide. All these four are strong ligands. Allied ions are weak ligands. Uh, yes, in uh, both COF6 3 minus and CONH3 6 times 3 plus, COF6 3 minus, CONH3 the 6 times. 3 plus. What do you observe? Look, look at the oxidation state. All halides minus 1. Minus 1 into 6 is minus 6. X minus 6 equals minus 3. X equals plus 3. Therefore, the oxidation state of cobalt is plus 3. Ammonia is a neutral ligand. It is 0. X plus 0 equals 3. Here also it is 3. So, the Coordination, I'm sorry, oxidation state of cobalt is same in both the complex ions. Look, uh, CO is 27, CO is 27 atomic number, so it is 3D6, 3D7, 4S2, 4P0, 4D0, correct? Next, CO3 plus, means you have to remove 3 electron, 2 plus 1. It becomes 3D6, 4S0, 4P0, 4D0 in both of them. When the ligand is weak, also look out of these 6, 4 are unpaired electrons, N minus 6. 4 are unpaired electrons. F minus being a weak ligand cannot pair up these electrons. So we have 6 electrons. In 3D6, there are 4 unpaired electrons. In cobalt, ligand is weak, means the energy gap between 2 between 2T, T2G and Eg is very less. The electrons can easily 
occupying EG orbitals instead of getting paired into T2G. Look here, out of these six electrons, three electrons occupy T2G. Okay? The fourth electron, instead of getting paired with T2G, finds it easy to occupy the EG orbital. EG orbital occupation demands less energy than the energy required for getting paired. Fifth electron also occupies EG orbital. Sixth electron gets paired. So we will, we will have four electrons in T2G, two electrons in EG in the case of COF6. Uh, how much? Four occupy T2G and the remaining two occupy EG. Here the ligand is very strong. So it will pair up these six, out of these six electrons, uh, look first T2G gets occupied with three unpaired electrons, three more electrons find it easy to get paired rather than occupying EG because the energy gap between T2G and EG is very wide, not easy to occupy EG easier to get paired. Therefore, in this complex, all the six electrons will be in T2G, no electron in EG. So, see the options. Yes, we have given COF6 as first. Therefore, it should be T2G4, EG2. And here it is T2G6, EG0. So this is slightly maybe a difficult question. Better you uh, see after the session when you find time, you think over this question again and see your explanation again. Okay. We are moving on to next question, question number 56. Read the question and try to think over the maximum oxidation state shown by manganese in its compound. I think this particular question is almost known by all the students. Maximum oxidation state of plus 7 is shown by manganese. So maximum oxidation state of manganese is plus 7. Uh, suppose you are asked in some other question, name a compound. So it, in permanganate ion, the oxidation number of manganese is plus I. So that is the maximum oxidation state of manganese in any compound. Moving on to the question number 57. Look, this uh, in the structure of diborane, uh, diborane structure I think is a peculiar structure. Uh, I think diborane is the only compound that we have we come across having that particular peculiar structure. There is a problem in diborane molecule. Look, diborane is B2H6. That means the two boron atoms should be uh, linked to each other by bond. We need uh, six more bonds uh, for hydrogen. Six, uh, six bonds means we must need we need six electrons for bonding hydrogen only, and uh, two more electrons to bond boron atoms. Totally, we need eight electrons. But two borons put together they have only six electrons. Out of these six electrons, they use two electrons for binding with hydrogen atoms like this. So four. In two more electrons, uh, yes, they have to bond with hydrogen and also boron. 
we call them as bridge bond like this. So bridge bond is a three centric, three centers, bridge bond, three centric. Uh, this is called bridge bond. Yes, totally we need uh, two plus two plus two plus two, eight electrons for these bonds, but from both the boron atoms we have two electrons, from hydrogen atoms we have what another two electrons, only four. So these are called the bridge bonds. That is the structure of diborane. Yes, we have so given so many options. The BH bonds are ionic, BH bonds are not ionic. There are two three centered two electron bonds. These are called two electron bonds. Two electron bonds. There is a BB bond. Boron atoms are not directly connected by any bond. There are two centered three electron bonds. Three centered three centered two electron the three two centered three electron bonds two centered three electron bonds yes there are bh bonds are ionic wrong there are two three centered two electron bonds three centered two electron bonds only two electrons for this bridge another two electrons for this 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Totally 8 plus 2, 8 plus 4, 12. Yes, boron 6 plus 6, 12. 12 electrons. There are 2, 3 centric, 2 electrons. In the entire bridge bond, only 2 electrons are involved. There are 2, 3 centric, 2 electron bonds. Option A is correct. This structure has been, uh, will be discussed in detail in our first PUC class. They are called the bridge bonds. Question number 58. When a primary amine reacts with trichloromethane in the, pro in the presence of ethanolic potash, then the product is. Try to recollect, this is a name reaction uh, in the chapter on amines. Hmm? Uh, this particular reaction is used as a test for primary amine. Just recollect. Look, primary amines are tested by this reaction. Uh, yes, <coughs> this is called carbide amine test for primary amines. Carbide amine test. This, this definitely you must have read this for your board examination. Carbide amine test. This is answered by only primary amines. So trichloromethane is nothing but chloroform. Chloroform systematic name is trichloromethane. Ethanolic potash means alcoholic KOH. So when a primary amine, this you have been told in the class, is heated with chloroform and alcoholic KOH, yes, alcohol ALC, alcoholic KOH, heat. Yes, you get a compound having formula RNC. RNC is isocyanide, commonly known as carbidamine. Isocyanides are commonly known as carbidamines. Plus, of course, you get 3 KCl plus 3 H2O. This is the main product. Isocyanides are called carbidamines also. They possess unbearable smell. Therefore, this 
particular reaction is used as a test for primary alcohols. Here we get an isocyanide. An isocyanide is NC and it is also called carbylamine. We hence call this reaction as carbylamine reaction of primary amides. So option was B. B for Bombay, B. Yes. Orthonitrophenol is less soluble in water than para and metonitrophenol. Think over this. Orthonitrophenol is less soluble in water compared to para and metonitrophenol. Orthonitrophenol, this one, metonitrophenol, and we have paranitrophenol. This is meton, this is para. They say this is less soluble compared to ortho and para. What is the reason? Uh, on many occasions, even in first PUC also we have told you, in orthonitrophenol, there is a hydrogen bonding between hydrogen and oxygen like this. This is called intramolecular, within the molecule, intramolecular hydrogen bonding. But in metanitrophenol and paranitrophenol, OH and NO2 are away from each other, such hydrogen bonding is not possible. Instead, they form intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Intermolecular hydrogen bonding means this molecule and one more molecule like that. Intermolecular hydrogen bonding is stronger compared to intramolecular. Therefore, these two are more soluble in water compared to this. What was the answer? In orthonitrophenol, we have intramolecular hydrogen bonding. In or para and metanitrophenol, we have intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Intramolecular hydrogen bonding is weak compared to intermolecular. As a result, uh, yes, orthonitrophenol is less soluble in water. Look, we shall see what options we have given. Melting point of orthonitrophenol is lower. Nothing to do with that. Orthonitrophenol is more volatile in steam than those of meta and para isomers. Orthonitrophenol shows intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Orthonitrophenol shows intermolecular hydrogen bonding. I think uh, you have made out the correct answer. Orthonitrophenol shows intramolecular hydrogen bonding. And that is the reason why it is less soluble in water. Also, orthonitrophenol, because of weak hydrogen, intramolecular hydrogen bonding possess lower boiling point. Boiling point will be less. Uh, even that also can be asked. We are coming to the last question of this model paper. IUPAC name of an organic compound obtained by the dry distillation of calcium benzoate and calcium acetate. Uh, this is one question that uh, we very often find in a large number of question papers. Look here. Uh, remember this. Cash, better to write also. Calcium formate on heating gives formaldehyde. If you want formaldehyde, you must heat calcium formate. If you want acetaldehyde, you must heat calcium formate and calcium acetate together. Then you get acetaldehyde. 
Suppose you want benzaldehyde. Take calcium formate and calcium benzoate. You get benzaldehyde. So all aldehydes can be prepared by this method. You, did you notice one thing? If you get an aldehyde, calcium formate is a must in the reactant. Calcium formate, formate plus acetate, formate plus benzoate, like that. If the product is an aldehyde, one of the reactant must be calcium formate. Suppose you are not interested in aldehyde, you want ketone, avoid calcium formate. Suppose, look here, you use this combination, CH3COO twice CA, calcium acetate alone, you are eating. You don't get an aldehyde, you get a ketone acetone. Suppose you eat a combination of these two, calcium acetate and calcium benzoate. You don't get an aldehyde because there is no calcium formate on the left side. You are bound to get ketone. Uh, remember a ketone having C6H5 and CH3 both. So it should be C6H5, COCH3. Acetophenone. Yes, acetophenone we have not given like this. C6H5 is phenyl group. C6H5 is called phenyl group. Uh, two carbon atoms are named as ETH in IUFAC. Since it is a ketone, ethanone. So it, it phenyl ethanone is nothing but acetophenone. <coughs> so the choice option A was the correct answer. So you should not be taken aback by, by the answers given. Astrophenone is a very common name. Astrophenone can be called phenyl ethanol, two carbon atom ketone, ethanol. So, students, we have discussed these 60 questions in our, from our model question paper. Definitely those students who take these 60 questions seriously and understand them will definitely be benefited in your ensuing examination.